Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today it's called consecutive transactions with increasing amounts, and it's a hard level SQL problem. And so essentially you're just given one table here called transactions, and you have the columns like transaction ID to uniquely identify the transaction, the customer that's doing the transaction, the certain date, and then the amount. And so what you want to return are all of the consecutive transactions with an increasing amount. And so consecutive means like they follow each other, like one after um, each other on a certain date. And so you want this to have at least three consecutive days. And so what that looks like here is, okay, um, you can see for customer ID 101, they have actually three consecutive transactions here from uh, 0, 01, 0, 02, then 0, 03. And then they also satisfy the other condition where they have an increasing amount for these three days. And yep, they do. It goes from 100, 150, then 200. And so maybe let's see if we can find another one here. Um, so we see that for the output 105, starting from 01. So um, here we go, 105, starting from 01. So they have 100, then 150, then 200, then 300. And you can see the ending date is on 04, and that's what you get here. Okay, so you want to get the starting date, the ending date of that like kind of consecutive ordering with at least three um, consecutive days. And you can see there's actually two rows for customer ID, and that's because, well, okay, they kind of hop here. Um, let's see. Yeah, from here on the 12th day, like that's not consecutive. There's eight days between these two. And so this is like the first interval, and then this is the second. And so you don't want to include them as one row. You actually want to split this into two separate rows. Okay, so to do this, I'll explain to you um, the solution for it. It's pretty straightforward. I actually made a great step-by-step um, -step guide where I actually I'll put the um, tables that you're expecting and everything. So I actually inserted these into my SQL myself and I uh, took it step-by-step -step here. And so this is the exact same like um, rows that you're going to see in the um, whatever, the uh, example for this question uh, just here. Okay, so it's same same rows. So we're just going to take this step by step. Um, and so what this looks like is first, what we want to do is just minimize and filter down this data set is to say, okay, let's just select the customer IDs and their transaction dates since we need this. And let's just join this transaction table with itself. And so the reason why we want to do this is so that we're working with a smaller set of just the ones that we know that have at least one consecutive day. And so we're gonna expand this, but why don't we just only expand the ones that we know and are very simple to figure out that, okay, the, the date difference between these two rows is at least one, it's the same customer, and the amount is increasing. So it's more challenging to figure it out like for three consecutive days, because you kind of need like a recursive query or something like that, but it's very simple to do it um, for one day. So we're gonna do that. And so that just outputs like this. We have all the rows where there's at least one other tape or one other date that's below it um, with the same customer and it has an increasing amount. Okay, so that's the first data set. And now we just expand this data set, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we just select those two columns from this table here and we're also going to get the row number that they're on. And this is just simple Windows function. It's a common pattern actually. And I'll explain to you in the next step why we do this. Um, but yeah, we just expand the customers and we just kind of enrich it um, with the row number. And so that looks like this. So customer 101, same date, and it goes one and then two. But we're partitioning by the customer ID and the transaction date. And so you can see here, this customer, well, there's two kind of consecutive rows here. And then let's say, okay, for this next group, it goes from one, then two, then three. And then say this group here, oh, it goes four, then five. Okay, so I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Um, and then for data set three, this is where like the core logic is happening for how we can actually figure out, okay, like was there, how many consecutive days was there here? Like is it 
going on for one day, two day, three day, because we really need to satisfy that three day condition. And so far, we've only been able to figure out which ones have one valid consecutive day. So this is the heart of the solution. And so what we're doing here is we are taking the customer ID and the transaction date again, since we need this info, we're just kind of propagating that along. And we're, oh, I think, yeah. And so we're gonna subtract, and I'll explain this in a second, the current date by that row number. And this is actually a really common pattern for kind of grouping these rows together. Um, and the reason why you can do this is it allows you to actually like uniquely stamp the um, like group that they're in. And so you can see here, remember when we saw that, okay, for 105 is a good example. So 105 here, we have two rows on the output. Okay, and that's because, well, they kind of leap here from this consecutive end at 04 to 12. So there's eight days that kind of separate them. And so currently, what you see here is we see that, okay, well, they're not, they're currently still grouped together because we're just getting the row number and we're partitioning by the customer ID and date. And so they're still stuck together, but we have to separate them as two independent rows. And you can actually do this by just, okay, why don't I subtract the current date by that interval? And that kind of puts into a separate group. And that's because, well, and I'll take my pen here, and we say, okay, um, we're looking at these rows here, and so let's get another color. And so we're gonna do one minus one, well that, like minus one date, well that's like zero, zero. And then, well, zero, two minus two, that is also zero, zero. Zero, three minus three is zero, zero. I'm just saying like 2023, zero, five, zero, zero. Um, 2023, 0, 5, 12, minus 4, well, that's 0, 8 now. And then 13 minus 5, that's also 0, 8. So you can see here now, these have been kind of split up into two separate groups. This group here, and then this second group, I'll just get another color quickly, here. And so we've actually been able to split them apart and figure out, okay, now we've separated them into two groups, and we can now figure out how many consecutive days are these in for now, okay? And so that's the heart of the algorithm, common pattern. It's in a lot of these hard uh, SQL questions. It's, it's awesome. And so now um, we've figured out the gaps between them and we can actually get the current number. And so this is kind of what I just showed you here. It wasn't zero, zero. I guess it kind of rounds down to three, zero, but um, you get the point. It goes zero, eight, and this round downs to 30. Okay, so data set four, four of five steps, we're almost there, stay with me. And so now all that we're gonna do is count the number of rows that we just saw. So we can see here there's three of these date groups, there's two in this date group, and then there's like two in this date group, and then there's just one in this date group. So we just group those together and we get the count. Very simple, right? So we just say, okay, um, this group here has two, this group here has one, this group here has uh, three, and then this group here has two, okay? So that's all this uh, fourth step is. And then that's it. We just have to prettify the output, and congrats, we made it. So to do that, to kind of prettify the output and present it to the customer or the user, is we propagate that customer ID along. We then grab the consecutive start, which is just passed from the previous data set, and then we just output the consecutive end. Now, one trick here, or one catch here, is that, okay, when we do this, um, you can see here that like the um, last row here isn't actually added. So if we looked at our data set, there is a final row here that's 0, 014, right? And so because of the way we handle data set one here, um, where we were doing a date difference with at least one um, date below it, we kind of filtered out this last row as there's no row below it with a higher amount. And so this was filtered out, but we still want to include it in our end result. And so we can easily do that by saying, okay, why don't we just, instead of taking the max, we can just simply say, okay, we can just add to the current date 
this interval. And so you're basically just calculating the consecutive ending. Because we filtered out this row, it's no longer there. But we can say, that's fine. Let's just count the number of rows in each group and just add to this starting one, this consecutive start. So we just take this, we add the count, and that's how we can kind of create that consecutive end date, which is right here. So it's just zero, one, we add to it, and then we get the consecutive end. So one plus two is three, one plus three is four, etc. okay? And that's it. So right below, I have all the SQL code. Um, feel free to search up in the explanation section. I just call it best explanation step-by-step -step guide. Um, took so long to come, or not come up with this, but bring it all together. Um, this is a, a solution by um, CPCS. Um, I think it's Competitive Programming Computer Science. Um, and he broke it up, but it just took forever to decompose it. And uh, yeah, so I hope this explanation helps and um, good luck with the rest of your queries. So thanks for watching. See ya.